many at the Arconia had access to Bunny Folger's apartment. Uma Heller had her own key. Howard Morris and other members of the Arconia board could get in easily and decorate her apartment for a surprise party. Yet the killer knocked. The killer didn't use a key, didn't sneak into the apartment. The killer knocked on her door. Let's solve Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 3, The Last Day of Bunny Folger. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Charles's maybe half-sister. Spoilers for the first season and the first three episodes of Season 2 of Only Murders in the Building. If you haven't seen all 13 episodes, pause this video, watch all of Season 3 so far, and then come back and watch it, or you'll get bunnied. We'll begin this podcast by looking at the double C, the credit clues. The opening credit clue Easter egg, number one, our credit clue from last week, is still here. Bunny is still walking Miss Gambolini instead of a dog. But look closely, there's also a champagne bottle next to our heroes in the courtyard. In the closing credits, you'll see puzzle pieces featuring a picture of Bunny as well as a picture of the infamous tie-dye hoodie. The puzzle piece itself hasn't come up on the show, but as we broke down on our last podcast, these puzzle pieces are coming and currently a social media online clue. Plus, if you look real closely at one of the promos for season two, you'll see puzzle pieces are going to play a big part in this year's mystery. Please subscribe, follow. We love breaking down these videos with you, and so reach out. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash double PHQ. That's the word double, single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, facebook.com slash double PHQ. You'll find us on Twitter and Instagram at double PHQ. And if you're on YouTube, we need you to attack that like button like it's a piece of cake. God bless them. YouTube forces you to get likes and comments. We need, if you're watching this, hit the like button. We need your comments. Please, please, please help us out as we begin the long climb up the stairs. Who trusts the elevator in the Arconia for season two? Before we run down the suspects, let's take a look at what episode three taught us about our victim, Arconia board president Bunny Folger from apartment 12A. About four months before Bunny was murdered, she handpicked Nina to be her replacement as board president. On March 11th, the day before Bunny died, she had lunch at the Pickles Diner with someone she describes as not a friend. On the day that she died, Bunny was woken up by her bird, Miss Gambolini. You'll notice a version of the Rose Cooper painting on the wall. Is this the real or the fake? We don't know. Early in the morning, as she listens to the radio, thinking of retiring to Boca Raton, you can see she's looking out her window. Is she looking across the street at the building where Rose Cooper was painting? Hmm. In season one, it was very obvious by the framing of this shot of the Hardy Boys that the showrunners wanted you to take note of Zoe's ring. Here in season two, look at the framing of this shot. The picture of the two sailors over Bunny's shoulder is very suspicious. Should we need to be taking a look at this? There's also a picture of Mrs. Gambolini. Back in the first episode of season two, Mabel expressed shock that Bunny had a bird. Yet, if we believe this episode, Bunny could hear everything, and I mean everything happening in Mabel's apartment. Couldn't Mabel hear everything happening in Bunny's? Wouldn't she have heard Mrs. Gambolini before this? Bunny sometimes uses the real elevator, but this morning, she actually used the secret elevator to head out and grab breakfast from Tommy. And this could just be me being a stupid man. But she does get her hair done nice, puts on perfume, tries to look good. Was Oliver right? Was Bunny trying to see somebody she really cared about? Whether it's this food vendor, or Uma, or Nina, or the waiter at the restaurant? What do you think, guys? Could Bunny have been getting made up to go see somebody? Funny, funny note. She loves her knickerbockers, and she's still a fan of Lynn Sanity. Jeremy Lynn, we miss ya. Right after she and Uma split up, Bunny received a call, a call from someone who had been calling her regularly about the painting. We don't know who this person on the phone is, but one person we can rule out is Uma. Bunny had lunch again at the Pickles Diner, and she got it from her regular waiter, Ivan. What is so fascinating is Bunny gives Ivan a huge amount of money. Now, if you're retiring to Boca, aren't you going to need that money to save up and be the snowbird? Why is Bunny trying to get rid of some cash? Hmm. 
Bunny not only has a secret elevator, she has keys to the controls of the main elevator, and she knows how to fix it easily. Now, one thing that just happens in murder mysteries is that we're learning information that the heroes could have told us a long time ago. For example, in the first episode of this season, when our heroes were being interviewed by the cops, the heroes certainly would have testified to the cops, Ah, Bunny came over shortly before we found her body. We gave her the tie-dye hoodie. After she left us, we heard and saw her crying. But the heroes didn't mention this in episode one. We don't find it out till here, episode three. When the heroes look out to see where Bunny disappeared to, it's a door across the hall that has closed, not a door down the hallway on the same side as Mabel's. Bunny also went to Woodstock. Heck yeah. If we can trust this edit, someone in black boots got off the elevator, possibly someone dressed like an elevator repairman, which Ursula mentioned earlier. That person knocked on the door and killed her. Did this person knock on the door because they didn't have keys to get in? The way Bunny addressed the person who knocked on her door, she knew that person. The person who killed her, she knew and recognized it wasn't a stranger. Bunny had been board president for 29 years, a job she inherited from her mother. If we assume Only Murders in the Building is taking place around the same time as we're watching it, Bunny became board president of the Arconia in the early 90s. We didn't learn much about Rose Cooper in this episode, or did we? So we're going to just jump right into all the suspects, including some new suspects we haven't mentioned before, as well as some returning people we haven't mentioned since season one. Ivan the waiter. Bunny knew enough about Ivan and his dreams to give him a lot of money. He knows enough about Bunny and is interested enough in Bunny that he's wondering who she had lunch with the day before. Why does he want to know about that? Bunny was very friendly with the food cart guy, but she didn't give him an envelope full of cash. She did to Ivan. What was special about him? Ivan the waiter. I've got my eye on you and no tip. Uma Heller. We've known since season one that Uma and Bunny are good friends. We also learned, which we probably could have suspected from the first episode of season two, that Uma has a key. If Uma has a key and she was the killer, would she really knock or would she just use the key to get in and kill Bunny? I think this is a good sign that Uma is not the suspect we're looking for. Howard Morris. As we mentioned, he also had access to Bunny's apartment He got in undetected to decorate her apartment for her retirement party. Could he have gotten in again to kill her, or did he need to knock? Now, Howard did all those decorations for the retirement party, which would have given him a lot of time alone in her apartment. Howard moved Mrs. Gambolini from the bedroom out into the living room. Did Howard do this because he didn't want the bird in the bedroom making noise as he took that painting? Bunny was quite clear. The person who had lunch with her was not her friend. Howard spends a lot of time trying to convince the parrot to say, Howard is my friend. We got a great look at Howard's handwriting in this episode. Look at the I in this note from season one in the word this. It's got a little curve on the bottom. Now look at Howard's I from the board meeting notes. Look back at the letter L in feeling and lonely. Now look at the L in the board meeting notes. Did Howard write this in season one? But what do you guys think? Write down below in the comments or talk to us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Lester the Doorman. Bunny did threaten to fire him, but the way it's presented in this episode, it doesn't seem like much of a threat. Lester may also have a wife named Lorraine who's got a bum knee. New board president, Nina Lynn. Now, Nina is really on top of her game. She knows where the flowers go. She knows which light bulbs have burnt out. She's ready to be new board president. Seems like she and Bunny get along, but it also may have been a planned takeover by having long weekly walks and other talks with Bunny. Nina really wanted this position. Just like the picture of the two sailors, the show highlights Nina's injured feet, including her leopard print socks. Would she be able to wear black boots like this? Nina also gets very angry that Bunny has decided not to step down as president. It's pretty early, but a bit like Uma, I'm crossing Nina off my suspect list. What do you guys think? Dr. Grover Stanley is back, the therapist who lives in apartment 6C. He was also there in Bunny's apartment early at the going away party. Dr. Grover is doing a little work off the clock, diagnosing Howard as very lonely. He's also a lightweight when it comes to alcohol. 
As building manager, Ursula would know about the secret elevator, in my opinion. She also is helping oversee the elevator inspection invoice. Ursula got Bunny to sign the elevator invoice before she died. Was she later throwing out that invoice as part of evidence against her? Oliver's son Will is back. Will has started following in Oliver's footstep directing a play. He broke a window when he was 10. If we assume Will is somewhere in his 30s, maybe we could assume that he broke at some point in the late 90s or early aughts. Alice Banks, which we all know is an anagram for Backline, did not appear in this episode. But was she the person who had lunch at the Pickles Diner the day before? Now, she wasn't in this episode, but Maxine Chan wrote, I think it's Alice. Sonia on YouTube wrote, I think it could be Alice, but I don't want it to be her because it feels like a repeat of last season. What do you guys think? Will you be upset if this year's killer is a new character and not one we met last year like the victim bunny? Write to us in the comments on YouTube, on Facebook.com slash DoublePHQ, Twitter, Instagram at DoublePHQ, or go to our website, DoublePmedia.com. Amy Schumer is renovating the penthouse without the correct permits. Evil. Lenora Folger, Big Bunny, did not appear in this episode, but let's talk about some feedback. A great YouTube channel, Priscilla TV, wrote, I finally caught up. Have no idea who killed Bunny. Had a great time watching Shirley MacLaine trying to cut the cheese. Hold on, Priscilla. Yusuf on YouTube wrote, I noticed you didn't speak about the content of Lenora's bag last week when Mabel was looking for the bill. At one point, something that I identified in my first glance as a black wig was briefly shown. Could it be that Lenora had been visiting someone in the building using the secret elevator in the back while wearing a wig so Bunny didn't recognize her? If you go back to episode two, when Mabel is looking through Lenora's purse trying to find the proof of sale for the Rose Cooper painting, first we see her pull out a bagel. Then, very briefly, you do see a black wig in that bag. So far, really, that doesn't tell us much of anything, but it could be a clue to note as we go forward. We didn't see Cindy Canning or her team this week, but Gloria on YouTube wrote, What about Cindy Canning and her aide Cindy and Poppy with their murderous-looking knitting needles? Do we need to put Charles's father in the suspect column? He could be involved in the disappearance of Rose Cooper. On YouTube, Jay wrote, Did anyone else notice that Charles's dad was bloody when he was arrested? I think he was beating Rose, and either her or one of her neighbors called the police. That could be blood, Jay, or it could have been paint. I don't know that I noticed any specific clue about our big three, Oliver, Charles, or Mabel, in this episode. What did you guys think? This week, in our wild theory, wild clue, let's look back at the Rose Cooper painting. Is it possible that the woman in the painting is wearing a wedding ring? Let's look at this furniture in the painting. Does anyone at the Arconia have a table like this? Let's get to the best part of every episode, your feedback. Kanisha just wrote, happy to be back with the show, and I found you guys' podcast. Thank you. Tamara also wrote, just discovered this podcast brilliant. Thank you so much. Samantha B. asked, where's the bulldog this year? Winnie the dog has been using the secret elevator to go get doggy snacks. No, I'm kidding. We... On YouTube, Random Human 19 wrote, Jan didn't physically appear in an episode until the third episode of season one last year. So it's quite possible that our suspect won't show up until this third episode or even later. Good point, Random Human 19. I'm your happy drug wrote, Love that the first two episodes hinted at more family secrets, possibly a secret love child or something darker. Now that Bunny's dead, I'm hoping we get to see Uma, Ursula, and Detective Williams get more action here with also little bits of info about the other residents and learning more about the past lives of our trio. I love the humor in this show and excited for the mystery to build. Jenny B. on YouTube wrote, I want to know more about Charles's past. I want to hear that line from season one about his father again. Jenny also had more questions, and she thought back to last season, and she said, We know how eight stabs in the chest. Is the number eight significant? Jenny said, What if each stab was for each cat that died? And Howard is the killer. Jenny B., that's my number one theory right now. That is brilliant. I don't think it's true, but there's nothing more brilliant than that. Daniel Rigo wrote, The killer would have to have blueprints of the Arconia and know how to be able to get in and out of the other apartments without being seen in the hall. 
Well, this episode, Daniel may have shown us that the killer just came out of the elevator and in the hall. Lily wrote, I feel Mabel may have something to do with the murder, maybe somehow caused conflict with the murderer and made the murderer want to frame Mabel for revenge, based on the Lenora Mabel fishy interaction in episode two. Amanda Woods on YouTube has a great far out theory. Who is the father of Nina's baby? Could it be Tim Kono? Man, Amanda, that would be brilliant. Dahlia just said, Oliver, I got my eyes on him. And Gabriel wrote, isn't Bunny's apartment on the 12th floor? How can it not reach the 12th floor if that's where the gang boarded it from? Well, Gabriel, this is the thing we've got to solve. In addition to all the puzzles we've got to solve, the producers chose an elevator sign which showed 11 floors, even though Bunny lived on the 12th. What could be going on? Is it just kind of a trick? that that type of elevator with the manual up and down lever can go to floors that aren't listed on the elevator? What do you think is happening here? That's what we saw this week. Did we miss anything? Did we miss any suspects? Who do you think, 30% of the way through season two, killed Charles's maybe half-sister? See you next week.